everyone. Emmanuel Soul TCKs, unite! Welcome to our worship together. Let's begin with prayer. Fold your hands and close your eyes. Follow the prayer. Dear God, thank you for this time of worship. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Help us to focus. Help us to know your word and how you created us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Boys and girls, do you remember the song we sang last time? It's called One of a Kind. And you are one of a kind. There's no one like you. Let's stand up wherever you are, and praise God together. I am one of a kind. God made me one of a kind. I am one of a kind. God made me one of a kind. Who has my eyes? Who has my Who has my store? I am one of a kind. God made me one of a kind. I am one of a kind. God made me one of a kind. God made me so that I can be me. God made me so that I right many times we want to be like everybody else but how can you be when you're one of a kind okay let's learn another song together it's one of my favorite songs it's called the reason god made me this song tells us how god made us in his image and we'll learn about that today about the words as you sing the song. And God created man in his image, male and female, he created them. And God created all for his glory, for his glory. That's the reason all creation is praising him. Oh, Father God, I am standing in your light. Pray all the world will see. May all I do, may all I do glorify your name. That's the reason you made me. Amen. One more time. And God created man. He created them, and God created all for His glory. For His glory, that's the reason all creation is praising Him. Oh, Father God, I am standing in Your light. Pray all the world will see. May all I do. May all I do. Glorify your name, that 
That's the reason you made me. That's the reason you made me. Amen. Did you know that? God created you for his glory. And he created you with a reason. Yes. Many times, TCKs are wondering, why am I here? Why do I have so many cultures inside of me? It can be very confusing, right? From today, we're going to learn the message called the gospel message. Hmm. What does the Bible tell us about who you are? What does the Bible tell us about our identity? If you don't know what God wants to tell you, you will always be confused. And we have to listen to the ways of the world. Well, who made the world anyway? The first verse in the Bible. What's the first book in the Bible? Genesis. That's right. So if I open the Bible to the book of Genesis, it's the first book. Genesis. Then the first chapter and the first verse, it says, read it with me. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created everything. That's what it means. I have a song with this verse. Let's learn the song together and think about how there was nothing and God made everything. Genesis 1 1 In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1 1 In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Wow, that's right. God created everything in the world. We cannot see God because God is spirit. Can you say that? God is spirit. That means you cannot see God, but God is everywhere and God created everything. Boys and girls, God is also a holy God. That means he has no sin. He is perfect. There's nothing in God that is evil. He has no sin. He is only good. Say that too. God is good. God is love. Yes, God is love. And God is good. God is spirit. God is also powerful. He created everything. The world that we see, the sun, the moon, everything in space, everything, God created. Do you believe that? If you don't know that God created everything, how can we know how God created us? Well, God created all the trees and all the flowers, everything that we see in our world. Even the food that we eat, like fruits and vegetables, they all come from trees and plants, and God made them. A healthy tree has green branches, and we see that there's life inside of the tree or a plant or a flower. I will show you a plant. Here is a plant. There's a small little plant. Yes, it's inside of, it's inside of uh, the dirt, and there's something that we can't see inside of the pot. What is it? Yes, the roots. The healthy tree has roots in the ground, and we give it water, and there is sunlight. So for this plant, the roots are inside of the dirt. And so when it gets sunlight and water, it can be alive. This is a real plant. It really is. But what will happen if I pull this out of the dirt? What would happen? Hmm, you know, it will die. 
I have this beautiful flower pot here. Isn't it beautiful? <sighs> it doesn't smell at all. Do you know why? Because it's not real. It's, it's uh, a fake flower pot. There is no life here. The roots are not real. But for life, for a plant to be living, it has to have its roots inside of the dirt or inside of the ground. What would happen if you pull it out? That is going to be a dead tree. The life source is cut off. The, it cannot live if the roots are not in the ground. God created all things in such a way. It's called the principle of life. When God created the world, it wasn't just chaos. It was very much orderly. God had a plan for everything. So even the fish that are under the water, they are happy and free as they live under the water. Yes. So any kind of fish. Yes. This is a clownfish, but there are thousands of species of under, underwater sea creatures. But what would happen if we pull the fish out of the water? What would happen if this fish said, I am tired of living in the water. I want to come out. What would happen? Yes, this little fish that jumps out of the water pew, will be a dead fish. Why? Why would it be a dead fish? Because its life source is in the water. That's how God made it. It's the same for even the birds and all the animals and everything God made. There's a place where they have to live and a way they have to live. Now, who do you see in this picture? We see people. God created the first man, Adam, and also the first woman, Eve. They were the first people that God created. And the Bible will tell us how they were created. They are the most beautiful in all creation. I will tell you now. The Bible says that God created Adam and Eve differently from all the other animals. He put his image into the man. He created Adam and Eve according to his image. Let's read it together. Genesis 1, 27. Can you read it? So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them them. Okay, so God created man, and this man is not just man and the boys only. Man as in all people. All people are made in his image. That's right. And he made people to be a man or a woman, a male or a female. But what does it mean, image? A lot of times we wonder, what does it mean, image? Okay, I will try to help you. Image is like a picture or maybe a reflection. It's like a reflection. Mm, maybe it'll be helpful for me to explain it this way. You look like somebody. Did you know that? When you were born, you were born very similar to somebody, looking like someone. Who would it be? That's right, mom and dad. You have their image. This is my mom. Do I look like my mom? Yeah, we look very, very similar. I have her image. I have very similar eyes and nose and even mouth. Boys and girls, that's it, what it means. It's to be like somebody. I have two boys too, and I'll show you. Uh... This is when they were like really little, Elisha and Isaiah. Do they look like me? Hmm, everybody says they look just like me. Well, I will show you a picture recently. This is Elisha now. Does he look like me? Everybody says yes. What about Isaiah? Does he look like me? Yes. <laughs> he has to look like me because I'm his mom. I, he has my image. 
Oh, boys and girls, some of us, we look like your grandparents too. What does it mean then to be made in God's image? Does God have a face like you and me? Does God have eyes and ears and nose like you and me? No. Remember, God is spirit. Let's read Genesis 2, 7. Ready? The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. What? So God made the man from the dust of the ground? So he made his body first. And then he breathed into his nostrils. And you know what a nostril is? It's the holes in your nose. See? He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So man's life source was God himself. And the man became a living being. Man became alive when, he put his, when God put his spirit into the man. So here is the dirt or the dust of the earth that God used. And then he made the body. So let's make the body just with our hands. Let's create the head. Here's the head and the shoulders. Here's like some arms there. Here's the body. Here's the legs. Okay. But now into the nostrils, the breath of life. Let's breathe out together. Ready? What happened? God put into the man his own spirit. That's right. You cannot see God, but God is real and he is spirit. So he put into the man, his body, his own spirit. What? What does that mean? That now God's spirit is with us. God made the man to be with him. He put his spirit into us. Wow, that makes man very special. That makes man to be with God and to be like God. Just like your image of your parents is in you, we have God's image inside of us. So what does that mean? That means when God gave us, God created us, he gave us a mind, okay? A mind means how you think, okay? How you think. I want you to touch your brain like this, how I think. Yes. And God gave man a heart to feel and to love. We have emotions, right? Touch your heart. And he gave us a body, a body with hands and feet so that we can work and do things. What is it all for? I will tell you. The image of God means this. With your mind, okay, touch your head again. With your mind, what are you supposed to do? Know God. Say it. Know God. With your mind, what do you do? Know God. This is true knowledge. And with your heart, what should you do? Yes, you must love God. Do that. Love God. Yeah, not love things of the world, but love God who created you. And what about with your body? What do you do with your body? Do anything you want? No, God made you to obey God. This is a sign for obey. Say it, obey God. Yes. So how did God create you? Ready? To know God. Love God. Obey God. Yes, and all of that put together, it means God made you to worship Him, to worship God. Give, you, give Him your whole heart. That's how God made you. And that's the meaning of image. So I'll give you another example. Just like a tree is living when the roots are in the ground and the fish are living creatures and they're the most happy when they're living in the water. Birds are flying in the sky. God gave them wings to fly in the sky. But what about man? What about people? A baby is happy when they're with mommy. Oh, that's right. 
little babies, they don't need gold rings and they don't need a stake and big things like this. Little babies are happy when they're with mom and dad. Well, what about babies without moms and dads? Can a baby be happy when they don't have mom around? A baby will cry. A baby cannot be happy. So that's true for all of us. God created Adam and Eve to be with him. God made us to walk with God, to know him, love him, obey him, to worship him, and to have a relationship with God. This is how God made us. So it was like Adam and Eve, they had all the animals around them, but they, to be like God, being like God, they were like the kings of the earth, king and queen. God told them to rule over the whole world, to have lots of children and make lots of people so they can all worship God. But in the Garden of Eden, where God put them, he gave them one very important command. It's also called covenant. Yes, say covenant. A covenant is a promise, a very important promise. God said to Adam and Eve, there was a tree that was in the middle of the garden. There were two trees in the middle. One was called the tree of life. And the other tree is called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's a long name. Say it again. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. One more time. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This tree, God said, you may not eat from this tree. For the day you eat of it, you will surely die. But if you obey God, if you do what he says, and don't eat from that tree, God promised eternal life. So for Adam and Eve, all they had to do was trust in God and follow God to really love him and worship him alone. God gave them power to rule over the whole world. Boys and girls, this is the first covenant God gave Adam and Eve and it's called the covenant of works or covenant of creation. Boys and girls, Adam and Eve were the happiest when they were with God. And this is how God made you and me. God made you to be with him. Wherever you are in the world, wherever you came from, whatever culture you have, if you are a TCK, you need to ask this question. Where did I come from? Who am I? And to answer that question, you must go back to Genesis chapter 1. I want to teach you a chant for the message. It's not hard at all, and we'll learn little by little every week. Follow me. God made man to be with him. One more time. God made man to be with him. The whole sentence together. God made man to be with him. Man was happy. Your heart is feeling full. Happy and had fingers on your shoulder like this and had no and then sin is Two straight fingers, but you curved it like this, and you're going to make circles going up. This is the word for sin. And had no sin. Man was happy. Ready? Man was happy and had no sin. And now I would like to show you the message that I just shared onto this little board. God created everything by his great power. So he is the king of the universe. And God created man. But how did he make him? He made him from the dust of the ground. But he made him in his own image. 
so that he could be with him. He put his spirit into the man so that man could be with God. So man is also, oh, how did he do that? He put his spirit into man so that he would have no sin. Here's Adam. He created Adam from the dust of the ground and Eve from Adam's rib. So Adam was like a king and Eve was like a queen. God made man to be with him. Man was happy and had no sin. There is a song that I wrote and it's called Made in God's Image. We are made in the image of God. And it's so important to know that. So let's learn it together. And it's with the same words from the chant. God made man to be with him. It's a little fast, so we could try it together. God made man to be with him. Man was happy and had no sin. God made man to be with him. Man was happy and had no sin. God's image, God's image, we were made to be with him. God's image, God's image, we were made to be with him. One more time. God made man to be with him. Man was happy and had no sin. God made man to be with him. Man was happy and had no sin. God's image, God's image, we were made to be with him. God's image, God's image, we were made to be with him. Amen. I hope you will remember that message. Let's end with some prayer points. Can you read it with me? Thank you for making us in your image. And number two, help us to know why you created me. That's important, boys and girls, to know why God made you. And number three, help us to give you true worship. Even though we cannot be together because of coronavirus right now, I hope that through our TCK online worship, you will learn more about God, learn more about who you are, and learn more about Christ. Let's pray. Fold your hands. Close your eyes. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your word. You created us in your image to know God, love God, and obey God. Teach us how to worship you and show us who we are in the image of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, I'll see you next time.